As you have seen in this workshop so far, we can create a REST API using API Gateway and the Lambda. And the following industry best practices, we are handling each endpoint and method with a different Lambda function. But as we've discussed in the API Gateway versus ALB lesson, API Gateway can be quite expensive when running at scale. And sometimes you might not even need all the nice features that it offers. And over on Azure and the Google Cloud functions, it's possible to add a public, non-authorized URL, so functions can be triggered directly without needing to run another service. This was an often requested feature to the Lambda team, and in April 2022, AWS introduced a new feature to Lambda called Lambda Function URLs, which does exactly that. It lets you create a public-facing URL that can be used to trigger the Lambda function. And the URL looks like this. And any request to this URL will be passed to the Lambda function behind it, along with the HTTP method, body, etc., etc., as well as any relative paths that you have included. This lets you build an entire API using a single Lambda function without needing API gateway in front of it. And this pattern of building a whole API using a single Lambda function has been around for a while and is often referred to as Lambda Lith. But before the introduction of Lambda function URLs, you typically had to use API Gateway in front of the function and use a greedy path to route all requests to the API to this single function. And you will typically use uh, REST frameworks such as ExpressJS or RESTify to handle the requests inside the Lambda function, including handling the request routing and maybe some cross-cutting concerns such as authentication. But as I've previously mentioned in this workshop, it's best to let API Gateway handle authentication and authorization so that you don't incur costs for unauthorized requests. But in this setup, you are still paying for API Gateway, which again gets expensive as you scale. You can of course switch to ALB at that point, especially if you're not using any of the API Gateway features anyway. But that is still an extra cost on top of the Lambda invocation costs that you're already paying for. So with Lambda function URLs, you don't need to run API Gateway or ALBs at all, and there's no extra cost for using Lambda function URLs, which makes it the most cost-efficient way to run an API using Lambda. In terms of authentication and authorization, you can either leave the whole API public and not authenticate it at all, or to enable AWS IAM authorization, so the caller has to sign the HTTP request using their IAM user or role, which also needs to have the permission to use the specific function URL in question. Mind you, this is an all or nothing choice that affects the entire API you can't choose to use a different method of authentication and authorization for each endpoint. You can still implement request throttling using Lambda as a reserve concurrency mechanism, and the request timeout is no longer limited by API Gateway's hard limit of 29 seconds, and instead is determined by the Lambda function's timeout setting, which can be as high as 15 minutes. This might be useful in very specific use cases, where you have really long running endpoints. But it's also a security risk because the same timeout setting applies to all your endpoints and can lead to significantly higher costs. If you want to learn more about this particular risk, then feel free to ask me in the Slack channel or raise this during this week's live Q&A sessions. The URL format is also not the most user-friendly and you also don't want to build dependency against a specific function's URL because it will make it harder for you to make changes later. For example, if you want to rename the function or create another function in its place or to move the function to a different region, then the URL will be changed. Or maybe if you want to move the API into containers instead, all these changes can cause problems for your front-end code and will need lockstep deployments between the front-end and the back-end. So typically, you want to use a custom domain name in front of the random URL that's generated by AWS. And with Lambda function URLs, you can create a custom domain name via a CloudFront distribution. But there's some problems with that. 
which we'll get on to in a minute. So Lambda function URLs is the most cost-efficient way to build APIs using Lambda functions. And it is a useful option, especially for high-throughput APIs, where you're not using API gateways features anyway. But it's not without its drawbacks. And some of these drawbacks are significant enough that I don't think you should use it as a default option. For starters, the Lambda lift approach to building APIs runs counter to best practices for security and performance, where it's recommended that you have many single-purpose functions each handles just one endpoint, and its IAM role only permits actions that are relevant for handling that endpoint. In a Lambda lift, your one function needs a broad set of permissions because the one function has to handle requests for all the endpoints, and this increases the blast radius of what attackers are able to do if they manage to compromise that one function, versus when you have many single-purpose functions, each with a limited set of permissions. Similarly, in a Lambda lift, the one function needs to have the dependencies that allow it to handle all requests. And having to load more dependencies during function initialization is going to increase the cold start duration. Imagine if your API serves both server-side rendered pages as well as JSON data, then endpoints that don't do server-side rendering will still be negatively impacted because they still need to load all the dependencies for server-side rendering during cold start. And as I mentioned earlier, you can only choose one authorization method for the whole API. So it's not possible to implement fine-grained access control where you can use different authorization methods for each endpoint, as we've done in this workshop so far. And that brings up another point that most APIs I have worked on eventually needed some features from API Gateway like its integration with AWS Web Application Firewall or WAF, or its integration with Cognito or request validation, etc. So Lambda function URLs is only really useful in cases where you know for a fact that you're not going to need these features because your API is really small and really simple, like webhooks, or maybe it only has a handful of endpoints. And although you can set up a custom domain name using CloudFront, there are also problems with this approach because CloudFront's default behaviors are set up for caching, not for API routing. And you will likely run into some hard to debug problems. For example, because of how CloudFront handles 4xx and the 5xx responses by default, where these responses are always cached. So, if you're not careful and you forgot to include the authorization headers as part of the cache key, then users can get unexpected 4xx errors just because some other user got a 4xx response from an endpoint. So setting up custom domain names with CloudFront can be tricky to get right, but without it, you will create tight coupling between the front end and the Lambda functions URL, which is randomly generated and as I mentioned earlier in this video, can cause all kinds of problems when you want to make changes to this implementation detail later. So then, when should you use Lambda function URLs? Like a lot of the recent Lambda features, it should be treated as a solution to specific problems, just as a medication is treatment to specific illnesses, and not something that you should be consuming every day. For instance, if your problem is with API Gateway getting too expensive and that you're not taking advantage of all the features it offers, then Lambda function URL can be a good alternative. Or if you're running into API Gateway's 29 seconds timeout limit, then you can work around that using Lambda function URLs. But as I explained earlier, this can potentially open up other security risks. So another way to get around the API Gateway's integration timeout limit is by using an architectural pattern called decoupled invocations, which you can read about in the link on this slide. The best use case for Lambda function URLs, in my opinion, is when you're migrating an existing API from, say, EC2 or containers or on-premises because you want to take advantage of the scalability, the built-in redundancy, and better security that Lambda offers but you don't want to re-architect your entire API right away. Then this Lambda lift approach using Lambda function URLs is a great step to get your foot in the door 
and start getting some benefits from using serverless technologies. And then you can gradually re-architect your application to take full advantage of what serverless can offer. Maybe using things like the strangler pattern to migrate from your old monolith API piece by piece. So that's my take on Lambda function URLs and when to use it. If you want to read more about how it works and how to use it, then check out this blog post I wrote on the Lumigo blog. I'll see you in the next lesson.